Okay, so, and I have a camera set on the monitor here. That's why if it's slightly cockeyed or something, I'm sorry about that, but I can't get up. It, there's not enough room in here to get up and reset. I wanted to show you the ATM software that connects to the Black Magic switcher. And right now I have it set on the audio screen. Now you'll notice that camera, which it's calling camera seven, which is really camera three to us because like I told you the first four, I told you on the other video, I don't know if you've seen the other video. The first four inputs are HDMI inputs. We use input one, which is called camera one here, but input one is the player, input two is the CG, and we don't use the other two HDMI inputs. They could be a camera or they could be another computer. Our cameras have SD, HD, SDI out, so we have to use the HD, SDI inputs. So we got camera five, six, seven, and eight. And eight is actually an analog camera up converted to an SDI input. Well, anyways, I wanted to say that because you'll see here on camera seven, which I'm waving my mouse over, that I have audio there. And you'll actually see some audio fluctuating over here also. Uh, that's coming from the actual Sony camcorders that are set up on the tripods coming through embedded in the video. If I were to unmute this channel, it would become active in the mix but we don't want that. So instead we're coming from an audio mixer on the XLR input as you see here and there's several things to talk about this. This is basically the output of the audio board coming in and where the Blackmagic switcher itself embeds the audio so you could actually set the levels here but since I have a mixer on the input of all the devices, and since I have a, a mixer on the input of the switcher, these are preset. Now, you'll notice that the signal on the input is a little bit under strength compared to the signal on the output. I'm increasing it by 4 dB to go to the recorder. Now, the reason for this is we don't want to take the chance of overmodulating the input, in other words, audio distortion. So if we send a little bit weaker signal into it. Even if someone screams on the microphone, it's not gonna go into the distortion range. But if we get too low on the recording, then that's a problem too. So it's kind of a fine balance there, but we're setting the output up. So that there is the audio part of when you can act to the Blackmagic switcher, but what most people are interested in is this part. Now, you could sit here and actually switch as you notice, let's switch to one of our other cameras. Uh, I switched to camera. Uh, I, well, no, that's camera two. We're on camera three, and that would be camera four. You can see it here because I'm recording the control panel. And let's see if I can tweak this camera just a little bit. Well, we want it close. Anyways, you can't see it here because I'm recording the control panel and not the output, but you could actually sit here and switch. You wouldn't even have to use the control panel. Uh, and then you could, you know, you could go to black at the end. You can pull this fader down and uh, here's the fade to black and here's where the rate is set, which was shown in the switcher video. This is just basically all the functions that you saw on the switcher control panel are available to you here with the exception that you're able to set the rate of these things and you're able to set the keys. So uh, you have up and downstream keyers and here are where they're set um, to key out the black in like the character generators. We're not using the media players, but you get the idea. And you're also able to set the rate of the fade in here. Now, this here would be media clips that you upload into the Blackmagic. So the Blackmagic would have its own little clips. They could be like CGs or little roll-ins. And you can do that through here, but since we've shown you, we have an external computer hooked to play our media devices, both graphics and 
video files, um, this is not useful to us at the moment. And then here's our audio. Now here's the interesting part is the camera control panel. Now this would be great if these worked with our cameras, but they don't, unfortunately. So here you can set the iris uh, and the zoom and all, you know, be like having a remote control of your cameras. This is one reason why some people go with the Blackmagic cameras. You can paint them and you can set the iris and so on and so forth and change the white balance and everything on their cameras, but not on the Sony cameras because we wanted in the studio manual cameras and the, the Sony cameras work for that. They're not as good as a regular broadcast studio, but so anyways, I thought I'd show you this. It's beyond the extent of this video to go in here and show you how to set up the rates and everything. But anyways, when you have this set up the way you want, then you hit save start up state. And then your settings will be remembered for the next time, such, you know, after you shut the control panel off, such as um, your rates of the automatic transition buttons and your key level for the character generator. Um, you want those sticky and the audio level becomes sticky too. Although it's interesting that on the control panel it says plus four, but here it says plus six. But oh, down here it says plus four, but you'll notice up here it says plus six. I think that's showing you the last peak that occurred. It's kind of a sticky peak there. So this is the software. They'll bring it into this video. We're really not going into the setup. This is just more of how we use it and why we would go in here. Mainly I go in here to make the switcher settings sticky by hitting file, save preferences. So, and initially setting up the uh, character generator keyers. So that's it for this video. And this connects to the network. All this is, all the black magic stuff connects through the local area network. Not through the internet, unless you open ports, but through the local area network.